Recently, I've been making videos about Google Display Ads and the Google Display Network, and one of the questions I've gotten a few times is, where did the Google Display Planner go? So it used to be its own tool in Google AdWords. It looks something like this screenshot I'm showing you right now. You can enter a keyword, you can enter your landing page, and they would give you keywords, interests, topics, placements, demographics, and there would even be a remarketing tab to give you some different targeting ideas. And you can see here some of the different display keywords you could target. So in this video, I'm gonna show you where the Display Planner tool went to. Even though they don't have a tool anymore, you still can take advantage of all these different features. And it's gotten a little bit easier because you can now do it as you're creating a campaign. So let's get into it. So when you sign into your Google Ads account and you're going to create a new display campaign, when you go to Tools and Settings, you're gonna see under Planning, there's Performance Planner, Keyword Planner, Reach Planner, but no longer a Display Planner. So what Google Ads ended up doing is getting rid of the Display Planner tool altogether. And what you have to do is when you are going into your campaigns and you're creating a new campaign, let's say you wanna drive sales and let's say you wanna use these conversion goals, we click on continue. Now it's gonna be select a campaign type. So from this, this is where you choose display. You can enter your website, you can name your campaign and we click on continue. So we're gonna start a new campaign here and the place where you're gonna find the display planner as you're going through and creating your campaign is under targeting. So when you're setting up your targeting, this is where the display planner is now. As soon as you click on add targeting, this is where you can add audience segments, demographics, keywords, topics, and placements. So what you could decide to do is say, okay, I wanna suggest who should see my ads. I wanna target people who Let's say I'm trying to sell a new pair of headphones. So I come up with different headphones that I'm trying to sell. I wanna target people who have some interest in headphones, who are actively researching headphones. So what you would wanna do is just enter headphones here. So you can enter search terms and what Google Ads will do is come up with different audiences you can target from the search terms you enter. So what they are actively researching or planning. So I can target this in-market audience for wireless earbuds and headphones, master and dynamic headphones, Beats headphones, Sennheiser head or products, Apple earbuds, high quality headphones. So there's a bunch of different in-market audiences that we can target here. People, people who are actively researching some of these different types of products. So for example, if somebody is in this Bose noise canceling headphones, they probably visited different websites, maybe something like a Best Buy, maybe something like Amazon, any of these large websites, and they may have been looking up Bose noise canceling headphones. They may have searched this term directly into Google. So what Google is able to do, and Google Ads in particular, is come up with these different in-market audiences. So instead of having a display planner tool where you have to go through, and let's just click on done for now, where you have to go through and add targeting and say, okay, I need to find all the different placements where people are generally gonna be who are researching headphones. So I come in here to edit targeted placements and I say, I wanna target people who are looking up headphones content. Now what you can see is it only gives us 44 different websites and some of these are probably very good websites to target. So what you could do is layer targeting and say, I wanna target some of these different targeted segments. So some of these audience segments, for example, who are actively watching content on some of these different placements. So this is how the display planner has changed. You're not gonna insert one keyword and get a bunch of placements, a bunch of display keywords, a bunch of topics. What you can do is come into your audience segments here we have our headphones here and I can say anybody who's actively researching headphones in general or anything related to headphones, maybe we'll get rid of some of these ones that aren't as relevant and say, okay, anybody who's targeting, anybody who's researching headphones in general, we wanna target them with our advertisements. So we have all of these different segments that we can target. If we come over here to browse, you can use some of these different audiences as well. You can incorporate your data, similar segments. You can combine audience segments. So I can say people who are actively looking up Bluetooth headsets and Apple earbuds. I can say people who are looking up both of those things at the same time, combine them into one segment. We can also create our own custom segments. So I just created a headphones audience for another example. And you can see here, I'm targeting people who are actively searching these keywords in Google. So if you go to custom segment, name your segment, people who search for any of these terms on Google, add the Google search terms, and you can create your own audiences now. So it's much better the actual display planning itself because there's a lot more audiences that you can target. 
And what you can do is not focus so much on targeting a hundred, a thousand different placements. You can target audience segments. And then if you want to keep things really relevant when they're actively researching certain types of content, you can come into keywords and you can say, okay, my product is headphones. And they're going to come up with a bunch of different keywords that we can target. So these are going to be display keywords. So it's going to match relevant websites based on whatever keywords we're entering. So when we do wireless Bluetooth headphones, this isn't a keyword that someone is typing into Google. This is a keyword that will actually match the content. So if, for example, let's use this website I have open already. So a chicken noodle soup recipe. So if I come into targeted keywords and I do something like chicken noodle soup, it's probably going to target pages like this with a chicken noodle soup recipe on it. So that's how contextual keywords work. It's not perfect. You're going to find unrelated placements and unrelated places where your ads have shown. But what you can do is say, okay, I want to target people in these targeted segments and then add a bunch of these different keywords here. Let's just add all ideas. We'll see the amount of impressions that we have. Okay, so we have 24 targeted keywords here, all related to headphones. We have these 11 different segments that we're targeting, and it's saying we have 360 million weekly available impressions to run our advertisements. So this would be a large enough audience to start targeting our ads, and we can start showing messages about headphones to people who are actively researching headphones and try to reach them as they're actively on content related to headphones. So the display planner has changed a little bit where you can actually combine targeting people with targeting content. You can combine multiple audience segments. So you can say somebody who is actively researching gaming headsets and somebody who's actively researching something else. So you can take some of these different targeted segments and combine them. In my case, I'm targeting all of these separately. So I have 11 total audience segments here of people who are actively researching different types of headphones and headsets. And then I'm targeting people on some of these different websites, videos, apps, so different places where people are, where they're going to be looking up content somewhat relevant to headphones. So this is some different ways that you can target towards content and people using the new display planner, which is actually when you're creating a new display campaign, that's when you can set up your display targeting. So a couple other options here as far as targeting. We can layer in demographics, so people based on age, gender, parental status, and household income. You can select or deselect any of these. And then the other thing you can do is, let's just say, rather than targeting targeted keywords for our to target relevant websites, we can choose topics. Now, if you are targeting content, you want to make sure you're choosing one of these options. Placements, topics, or keywords. You don't want to combine all three of these. So what we can do is come in here to targeted keywords. We'll get rid of all of our targeted keywords here. Click on done. Now our impressions go back to 10 billion plus impressions. So we're targeting all these people in these different segments, no matter what they're doing on the internet. We don't care what types of content they're looking at. So if they're looking up, let's just say a funny video or somebody's stand up routine, or they're just listening to music on YouTube, or they're looking up recipes, whatever it is, they may see our ads. So that's the way to look at it if you're targeting audience segments. You're targeting people who have a level of interest in what you're offering. And then the other thing you can do is incorporate topics. I don't know if there's gonna be a topic around headphones, but maybe you wanna target some type of tech topic. Okay, so they have music and audio, music equipment and technology. So maybe I wanna target that as my topic. We'll see what our weekly available impressions is for this. Okay, so using this topic and using the audience segments, our impressions are now 430 million impressions, weekly available impressions. So plenty to target with our advertisements. We can reach people as they're targeting, as they are browsing different web pages, apps, and videos. We can target them with our advertisements, especially if they've shown some level of interest where they're actively researching or planning to purchase some of these different options related to headphones. So this is how the display planner works. You can use your keywords here and search, and they will come up with different in-market segments that you can target. There's different affinity audiences that you can target. Now, personally, I think affinity audiences are much too broad. So if we come back over here to browse and we're looking at all these different options, I generally recommend targeting people with in-market segments using your data. So if you have YouTube channel, you have people visiting your website, you can combine some of these different segments. When you start using your data, similar segments are going to be automatically created. So they're going to come up with some of these different similar audiences based on some of your data. So this are this is for my website Beachfront Decor. 
so I can target people who are similar to people who are visiting my website. And Google had Google has so much information about us from the websites we're visiting, the things that we're searching, the videos we're watching, the apps that we're using, that they're able to put us in some of these really detailed audiences. And you as an advertiser can use this new display planner to take advantage of some of these different audiences and target people. Now I went over custom segments. You can actually target people who are actively searching keywords in Google. So make sure you're creating custom segments. You can combine segments if you want to incorporate your data in similar segments and target in market audiences as well. So these are some different options as far as the display planner. What you can do is target audiences, target demographics, and then layer in content targeting as well to try to reach people as they are actively researching some of the things that you are promoting on your website. So if you have any questions about where the new display planner is, it's actually when you're creating a display campaign. And these are some different ways to use it, some best practices. And if we come over to tools and settings, you're not going to see the display planner tool anymore. If you try to access the page where the display planner tool used to be, it's just no longer there. So this is where you actually plan your display campaigns. There's no tool. It's not called the display planner, but this is where I would tell people who used to use the old display planner in Google AdWords where they can find it in the new Google ads. If you have any questions about this, please leave them in the comments section. Thanks for watching my video today and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.